I used uh, really greatly uh, the rate of movement. Um, I'm French, but I used to live in England for six months, for one year and a half, in Spain for six months, and now I'm resident of, um, a resident of Estonia for one year and a half. But it wasn't that easy. Um, also on health uh, perspective, because uh, I needed some medicine, and because France can't provide me with the right amount, I had three months medicine and I was away from, for six months. Uh, I was also unable to find the right perspective. I, uh, what kind of other problem I had? <laughs> there were plenty. Uh, I had to, uh, during the COVID, to travel from Spain to Lithuania to join my boyfriend. But the thing is that they refused to uh, give me a great uh, certificate that says that I was negative into English. Uh, first, they gave it to me in Spanish, and then when I ask again, they only translated five words, so I had to modify myself the document. Uh, everything is not great, uh, just to be cured properly. Uh, my boyfriend got a vaccine for the COVID-19, and he got really bad issues. And uh, in uh, Lithuania, we got to pay a lot uh, private hospital and it wasn't enough so we had with our own money to move to uh, Austria by bus and train because uh, he got some uh, ears problem in the meantime and in Austria nobody's were able to cure him his mother was preoccupied so we decided to go to France in France we made again the same kind of exam and nobody was able to cure him and they they told me at the hospital in Paris that you know it might be stress, and I said, maybe, but uh, you know, the, the doctor made uh, some exam. And as you can see here, you have a certain figure. Normally, if you are cured against COVID, it's 180. Doctors start to be preoccupied at 300, and my boyfriend is actually 3,500 plus, because the machine can't calculate more, and we weren't able to find a person able to cure him. He missed um, a semester of study, and now we we just pay for him not to be cured, and he has also consequences on his life. I have also friends that are foreigners in Estonia, and they're telling me, oh, I have to go to the doctor, but I'm afraid that the people don't speak English. Oh, I need this kind of uh, medicine, but I have to wait for my family to come because this medicine is not available in Estonia. I don't know what kind of uh, medicine can be available. And this thing can be solved because uh, we need a health management information system. And to transfer the documents, uh, you need to have a, a practitioner health record to be able to yourself put the document online. You need um, electronic health records and you also need uh, patient accessibility health records to just put some notes on it. And uh, the government of Estonia is already doing this. Uh, in France, you have uh, uh, Mathieu uh, Carita, who is uh, the CEO of uh, New Medical, who is also um, putting some effort into eHealth, and he also posted about it last week. And uh, we have also a great uh, scientist in uh, in France, who is called uh, Sajida Zouari, and she is making blockchain so that uh, between, for example, for kidney donation. Um, if you can't give a kidney to your, uh, I don't know, husband, for example, but you can have a receiver from another EU country, and this receiver has also uh, a family member that is uh, that can give a kidney to your own uh, husband, then the exchange can be made, but then the countries have to approve it, and it's really a mess. And she has also put a uh, blockchain so that, for example, if you want to know your origins, you don't give all your uh, health information and genetic information to uh, America, especially because the, the person who is now leading this in America is the wife of the CEO of Google. So um, in uh, Europe, we have all the data we need, we have all the technology we need, and now I need to you um, as an opportunity to implement it. So if you have any actors that can help me doing so, it would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.